Today I want to show you a famous advertisement uh, written by the legendary copywriter and direct response marketer Gary Halbert. Now this ad was written for a perfume several decades ago, but make no mistake, it was so incredibly successful, everybody was talking about it and they still are in certain copywriting circles. So. The purpose of this video is to just break down the ad itself to show you why it worked, how it worked, and to showcase the true unbelievable geniusness of Gary Halbert because he was such a genius. He uh, invented uh, tons of copywriting techniques that we still use today uh, in, our, in our lives every single time we write an advertisement, a sales letter, a sales email, a Facebook ad, a YouTube ad, anything. Uh, and the purpose of this video is to basically just give tribute to Gary uh, and to show how such a short but highly effective ad was able to generate hundreds of thousands of customers. And maybe you can learn stuff from this as well that you can implement in, own, in your own business or in your own copywriting business. So uh, hope you like this. Let's get started. All right, welcome to the ad itself. And first of all, the first thing that we notice is that it looks like a newspaper article. It doesn't look like an ad. It doesn't look like something in your face, something aggressive. No, instead, it looks like uh, a newspaper article. So it's really covert. And this is really important for effective advertisement and effective copywriting, because if you can uh, insert your sales message in the native uh, space, of your target audience and make it seem as if it's part of the content part itself, then that's definitely a big advantage for you because they won't be triggered immediately by this potentially being an ad. So uh, this is this is immediately a, a good uh, point in plus because whenever you can uh, you can uh, make your advertisement uh, valuable and covert, then your chances of success increase dramatically. And um, the, as you can see, this basically looks like a newspaper article because it was written for the LA Times. And uh, what type of articles there are in the LA Times or in the paper? Well, something like this. And, uh, you know, Gary was a genius uh, to, to realize this and to, and to uh, make sure that this won't reek of an advertisement. Also, it looks like an interesting story, okay? So this is a great example of an advertorial. Um, an advertorial is basically a piece of content which gives a lot of valuable information, but also uh, has some sales elements, especially in the end, but not only in the end. So uh, an advertorial uh, basically just uh, takes a sales argument and makes it into a much more uh, easy to understand way and in a way that, uh, you know, people will not throw out immediately. It won't trigger their bullshit detectors. Okay. So this is really important. And what can you do in a newspaper article uh, that that's probably your best option if you want to not trigger people's bullshit detectors? Well, you can make it seem like an interesting story. And this definitely seems like an interesting story. So check out the headline. Free perfume giveaway. Miss Ernest uh, Borgnin, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher the name, agrees to give away 100,000 free samples of her new perfume just to prove it is safe to wear in public. Wife of famous actor swears under oath that her new perfume does not contain an illegal sexual stimulant. So think about it for a minute. Like, this definitely seems like an interesting piece of trivia or an interesting news or something. And people, when they're reading this, they're flipping the newspaper. They don't want to read uh, uh, like something that doesn't belong there. They want to read something that definitely belongs there. And this definitely does a great job at that. Uh, also, if we, if we uh, notice and we analyze the headline itself, first of all, there's a free perfume giveaway. So uh, this is what we call a direct offer. It's very simple, but it's effective. It doesn't always work, but for this type of offer, uh, it's definitely a good way. And Gary knew this uh, because people love free, people love, love giveaways, 
And uh, the target audience for this ad was uh, women who wanted to make a great impression on men, who wanted to uh, smell nice and to basically be desirable uh, in, in, uh, in the eyes of men. It was definitely a, another world back then. So, uh, you know, some of the desires of women were different compared to now, but Gary knew that in that particular business climate, this type of, of, of headline and this type of, uh, of, uh, emotional hook would definitely work well. Also, this is what we call the, the pre head basically this one uh, but if we if we move to the main headline itself we can immediately notice that there's uh there's a giveaway of a hundred thousand free samples so this definitely seems very intriguing on one hand but on the other hand you know claude, claude hopkins uh, a famous legendary direct marketer uh whose book everyone should read by the way um came up with this idea of free samples and how uh, effective they are in advertisement campaigns. And uh, Gary knew this. He was a big, uh, he was basically a student, not a direct student, but like he definitely uh, had the same mentality as Claude Hopkins. And uh, he used this to great effect. Uh, also, since we since we noticed that there's a hundred thousand free samples so what does this mean well it means in the eyes of the target audience that this must be a very popular this must be uh something that people actually want so it it, it implies social proof that someone is giving to, is willing to give away a hundred thousand samples they don't just want to give away a thousand or just try something with a hundred no they are going to go full in with a hundred thousand so that's definitely something and also this also kind of implies that um there's gonna be enough samples to uh to be worth it to go there in, in in person because this ad asked people to go to uh, a giveaway in person take a sample and then obviously if they like it buy more eventually but this hundred thousand number is, is doubly effective because on the one hand it's, it's it provides proof uh, and on the other hand it kind of implies that you know you're gonna get your sample if you if you show up uh, also new, so the headline uses new, new, as we know, is a very powerful wor world word in advertisement and in copywriting. Uh, it always works well with direct offers. Uh, people just want new. And uh, if you look at various ads on TV or on the internet, on YouTube, everywhere, everybody's trying to present you, present something new to you. Uh, and it just works great with these types of things. Also, there's huge curiosity at the end of this headline. So uh, what do you mean safe? Like people, uh, what they're thinking after reading this headline is that how can it be, uh, how, how can this perfume be so effective that we want to prove it's safe to wear in public? What do you mean it's safe to wear in public? And that's, although it doesn't give away what this means, that's exactly what we want because we don't necessarily want to give away everything in the headline. We wanted to tease uh, something. We, we wanted to have curiosity so that people actually read the next line. So the purpose of the headline is to get people to read the sub headline. And the purpose of the sub headline is to read uh, the, the first line. And the purpose of the first line is to read the first paragraph and so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, by by teasing something like this uh it's uh we definitely build a lot of uh curiosity and people won't really like they want to know what what's up and also check out the subhead so wife of famous actor swears under oath that her new perfume does not contain an illegal sexual stimulant uh how can you not read this and be um and be curious what this whole thing is is, is about okay so this kind of have like a has like a reverse psychology effect to it. Most advertisement and most uh, most uh, uh, ads try to sell you something and try to um, make it seem like you know this is the best thing since sliced bread. But not this. This one is kind of using a reverse psychology. It's trying to prove how you know this part perfume does not contain a sexual stimulant. And again, this is what we call a big idea in copywriting uh, and. It will it will echo throughout the the ad itself this whole sexual illegal sexual stimulant thing 
uh, and also how you know the wife of famous actor this implies credibility automatically swears under oath so once someone reads this swears under oath uh, it means like you know I better take this thing seriously like what do you mean swears under oath what's what's in the in the background what's happening here is there some kind of conspiracy here uh, is there something about perfumes that I don't know about. And this is like an aphrodisiac or something. So it definitely sucks people in and creates a lot of, lot of uh, curiosity inside. And it's, it's an irresistible hook. People are going to say, say what? And they're just going to start reading just so that they can understand what's going on here. So as we move into the, uh, the, the body of the ad itself, um, the first, we have a question. We have a philosophical question, actually, that hooks people in even more. Uh, and it starts on a slippery slope that I mentioned earlier. So it's basically like a slide that people, you know, get on and they, and they ideally, they start sliding down, 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 down until they reach the bottom, which is, in our case, it means they uh, convert, they become a customer, they take action, okay? Uh, that's why this is called direct response marketing, because we want to give people a message and the, we want them to respond immediately and measurably, not like with a Coca-Cola ad or something. So we start with the with a, a philosophical question, like, is there such a thing as a perfume that drives men crazy? And again, imagine the target audience for this. Women who want to make a great impression and they want to get husbands, they want to be desired, they want to rise above their, let's say, competitors, uh, so other women. Um, and uh, I know it sound, it might sound sexist a little bit, but bear with me because this was the climate in, in, in those times. And, uh, and these were the ads that worked really, really well for them. So there's a question and notice how he's not trying to sell the the whole product all at once or something he just uh, basically start he, he starts talking about about an interesting thing so is there such a thing as a perfume that drives men crazy maybe maybe not scientists all over the world have different ideas on the subject many of them believe that there are certain ingredients that can be incorporated in certain fragrances that acts as a definite as a de definite sexual magnet Others believe that this is not true. They say that if a woman believes she is sexier when wearing a particular fragrance, then she will act sexier and that this, this is what men uh, in her life are really uh, are respond to, responding to. So um, the idea here is that Gary didn't really start to pitch the uh, product immediately or something. He goes on... In, a, in an interesting, basically, tangent on, on, on a philosophical question. And uh, the cool thing about it is that with, a, with something ethereal, like, a, like a, a perfume or something, because, you know, it's hard to measure the real effect of perfume. So Gary definitely knew this, and that's why he said this, this part here. In other words, they maintain it is the women's belief in their fragment, fragrance and not the fragrance itself that makes the difference. So uh, he brings in, um, he answers an objection in, in, in essence for them uh, and the objection of what if this doesn't work? And he answers it by saying that, you know, it's not about the per perfume, it's about the belief in the perfume. And he's also trying to sell this belief uh, that this is, this basically is like a sexual stimulant, this type of perfume. That's what he's selling uh, in, in the ad itself. So um, uh, so this is definitely a great, great part here. Another one is that he, all throughout the, the ad, Gary uh, works hard to position this as something new and unique and exciting. So this, this, this isn't like any other perfume, you know, there are tons of perfumes on the market. No, this is like, as he said, this is the most exciting new fragrance developed in the last 10,000 years. Uh, and, you know, how can people after this nice hook, we call this emotional hook because it builds emotional rapport with people, uh, how can they not read further 
after after discovering that this this could be uh, such a new and exciting new opportunity and discovery. Okay, uh, and also you know this there's a promise. Obviously, every every everybody can make promises that this is the best thing since sliced bread. But it's very important to uh, support those claims uh, with proof elements. And you know most people when they think of proof. Uh, they think about social proof or testimonials or something, but there are actually tons of other types of proofs. And uh, the great Gary Bensavenga uh, actually wrote so much about the 26, if I remember correctly, 26 different types of proof that you can use all throughout your copy to really uh, make your argument strong and uh, and resistant to potential uh potential scrutiny and uh, to answer objections that people might experience after reading your your promise. Uh, so this uh, this ad does a great job uh, in, uh, in in highlighting various proof elements like you know how the people who develop this are, are hardworking and how you know this person is the um, the wife of a famous actor actually the picture itself uh, lends credibility uh, to the to the ad itself, because you know who who doesn't and, and remember this was published in the LA Times. LA that means Hollywood, that means stars, that means you know celebrities. So everybody wants to mingle with celebrities or people associated with, with celebrities. And Gary probably knew this, and that's why he used a picture uh, of the woman. Uh, that's why. Uh, he repeatedly mentioned that you know he is the uh, she is the wife of a famous actor. Okay, um, so that's definitely a strong um, proof element here. Um, also, this line I like it. She also insists there is nothing in the fragrance that she knows about that could be classified as a medical aphrodisiac. So at, at, at this point, the reader is probably thinking, so what is the thing that she isn't telling me? That, that there must be something here that... So, so what's the secret here? There's a secret. There's, it seems like a conspiracy or something that they don't understand something and creates this, this, this weird... Uh, it, it opens a loop in their mind, the reader's mind, that they must know what the secret is. And even though the uh, the creators of the fragrance are insisting that this isn't an illegal sexual stimulant, uh, the reader kind of doesn't really buy it at this point, okay? Uh, and it creates, it, creates, uh, it creates ungodly amounts of curiosity, and it's really, really powerful. So also, you know, there's always promise and proof elements all the time. So what's the number one desire of the target audience? Again, to be attractive, to be, uh, to, to be found attractive by uh, ideal men that they want. Okay, so that's why we have a line here. It says, in fact, many people, especially men, say that once they smell it, uh, they just can't get it out of their minds. So that's what our target audience wants. So that once a man smells them with this par perfume on them, uh, he he won't be able to stop thinking about her. That's what they want. And uh, Gary Halbert again very smartly um, like put this this uh, this uh, element here. Uh, so everything alternate. It's like a promise proof, promise proof, promise proof, and. In your own uh, advertisement campaigns, you you can also uh, you know follow this type of formula with promise proof because whenever you make a promise, it's a good idea to highlight it with proof and to back it up with proof. Okay, uh, but let's move forward. Um, after some time, you know the interesting thing is that the whole uh, advertorial switches into an interview type of format. And this is really, really interesting because rarely do you see something like this in an ad, in a, in a sales letter, because this, this is basically a sales letter. Uh, rarely you, um, can you find something like this. And uh, it's really powerful because once again, it seems like a covert ad. It seems like 
something that fits naturally into the medium of the LA Times. It seems like a real newspaper article. So it's not, it doesn't trigger people's bullshit reactions. And also, since we have this interview format, we have the, the, the five W's. And this is a term um, used in journalism uh, whenever someone's trying to write a story. So it has a who, what, when, where, and why component here. And uh, by using this, you know, again, it sucks people in. Uh, it increases the likelihood, greatly increases the likelihood of them reading the whole ad to the to the end where the where we have the call to action. And this again just shows how Gary Halbert was such a genius uh, and how uh, he came up with all sorts of creative ways to uh, to come up with to. Um, hide an offer in in a piece of content that people will actually read okay uh and this is a very very uh interesting interview i'm not gonna not gonna read it but all throughout the interview we have kind of like this reverse psychology type of thing so instead of hyping up the product you know the creator of the product constantly downplays it and it's the interviewer who actually uh, always highlights the benefits of the product. So um, I'm, I'm just going to read the first few lines. Okay, so interviewer, why is it, Mr. Uh, Borgenin, that your new perfume has created such a sensation? And then she says, well, uh, one thing, everybody just seems to like the fragrance. Maybe it's just as simple as that. And then the interviewer says, bull. You know it's more than that. Everybody I've talked with is wondering if you've put some kind of illegal sexual stimulant or aphrodisiac in Tova perfume. And then the creator again says, that's ridiculous. Tova perfume contains nothing dangerous, nothing illegal uh, above at all, nothing that could con conceivably be classified as a sex drug. Uh, and so on and so forth. So it's very, very interesting because it flips the entire script. It doesn't seem like the the uh, article itself is trying to convince people of anything. In fact, it's trying to like downplay the whole um, effectiveness of the product. And uh, like imagine if you could use something like this in your own Facebook ad or YouTube ad or or email marketing or or sales letter. Uh, it's it's much more powerful than. Um, than if you were to, um, you know, try to force people on the idea that they should like your product because it's so good, okay? Um, and you know, it it just raises the trivia value of the whole um, of the whole piece here because check this out. So the interviewer says we've heard rumors, uh, Miss Borgenin, that unless Ernie is with you, he refuses to let you wear your new perfume in public. Is this true? And then I have no comment on that. Are you wearing Tova right now? No. Why not? I'd rather not comment. In fact, I'd appreciate if we could change the subject. So it seems like a piece of trivia. It seems like controversy. And people love controversy. They want controversial things. This is what uh, has entertainment value for them. Uh, but by the interviewer always probing um, the, the, the creator of the product, um, about why this this whole thing is so popular, and she downplaying it, it uh, it again flips the script, it reverses the whole uh, thing, and as the reader, you know, they're they just have more and more curiosity, and they want to find out. So what's up with that? Uh, they, they they're probably asking something like, like could this perfume actually be so powerful that it makes her husband jealous? Uh, that her husband doesn't even uh, let her out with this perfume on. It's 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 really really powerful. Um, let's move forward. So it seems it seems like a conspiracy. This whole story to the reader seems like a conspiracy, and people love conspiracies, and they want to find out whether there's something there or if it's just something that you know it doesn't really make sense. Uh, but they think that there must be something behind this. So what can it be? And the only way to find out is to read the ad uh, to the end. So also at this point, um, one of the uh, like the the creator of the ad says, 
swear under oath. So this, again, is escalating the emotional stakes here. Uh, and people love escalating tensions and, and escalating emotions uh, because the interviewer wants the creator to swear under oath that this does not contain something uh, like a stimulant or something. Uh, and uh, this is, again, very powerful, very creative, and it just shows Gary Halbert's uh, genius. That's it. Uh, and also notice how the whole ad is conversational and easy to read all throughout. It, it doesn't seem like an ad. Again, that's the, that's the objective here. You don't want it to seem like an ad. You want it to blend in its native medium. And um, it's very, believe me, it's very, very, very hard to write a piece of copywriting that uh, that's so easy to read and seems effortless okay there's a lot of effort actually that goes into making your writing seem like simple and easy to read and and approachable and inviting and interesting okay it's 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 really hard and uh usually even the best copywriters in the world uh like in order to to have something like this they do research for weeks they have tens of pages or even hundreds of pages of notes based on research. They write various drafts. Uh, they cut, cut, cut and edit, edit, edit all the time. And they rewrite it several times, actually, in order to get the final product. So don't worry if you have like writer's block or something. Uh, some people, you know, mo a lot of people actually struggle with writer's block. If you have it, here's the, here's the, the solution to it. Just do research. And while doing research about the product, about the target audience, about your competitors and everybody, uh, you're going to have so many notes. It's going to be able, you're going to find it hard to actually uh, know what to include and what not to include in the final ad itself. And it becomes harder to exclude so many things uh, and to only, only uh, have the things in the ad, in the final ad that really, really make a difference. Okay. So uh, we have, we still have this uh, this um, interview style here, and uh, at the end, you know, uh, the the creator of the product even becomes angry because she doesn't really want to like. Ha it, it sounds ridiculous to her that she has to uh, swear under oath, but in the end, she swears under oath that you know this does not contain. Uh, a medical aphrodisiac or something, but there's something very, very interesting and subtle here. She said, to my knowledge, so, so she says, uh, Tova perfume does not, to my knowledge, contain anything whatsoever that could be classified as a medical aphrodisiac. And then once people read this, it's like, to my knowledge, medical aphrodisiac, which is the number one desire of the target market, like there must be something there. Like, what if there's something else in addition to her knowledge that still classifies this as a medical aphrodisiac. And this just builds desire and desire and desire in the target audience. Uh, and at this point, most of them are already sold, but we're still not done yet uh, because Gary just doesn't want to let them hanging. Uh, so we pile on even more benefits and curiosity elements on this ad. So uh, he, basically at this point, um, you know, the interviewer, who's kind of like the copywriter, the voice of the copywriter, presents an irresistible offer. So thank you. Uh, now that this is about you giving away 100,000 free samples of Tova perfume to prove it is safe to wear in public, is it true? And yes, it's true. Uh, we just reinforce the offer once again. Uh, basically, people are going are, are invited to attend uh, a free sampling. There's no admission. You know, this makes the offer even more ir irresistible. And here above, it says that um, basically you'll be able to meet celebrities as well if you go to this because don't miss it because this is the chance of a lifetime as soon as you arrive you will get to meet tova and ernie plus marty allen and many other special friends uh, of them but best of all there is no admission and you will get a free sample of tova perfume so it's kind of an irresistible offer it has uh, a number one benefit that they want it uh it uh, ensures that if you take the time to go there, you will get your cut. Uh, it uh, it also says that you know it's going to be held at 
a Century Plaza Hotel, you know, in the Santa Monica room. Uh, and, you know, everything just seems like a, like a very exclusive, very, uh, very high level type of, uh, of meeting that, that, that they should attend because they're just going to get so much value out of it. It's not even funny. So, um, yeah. And at the end of the ad, we have even more proof and credibility. Basically, we uh, Gary just mentions the uh, the benefits once again. It uh, it angles this whole offer as a no brainer, so that there's going to be no risk to the to the people, because he says uh, whatever the case, you can find out for yourself at no risk at all. All you have to do is go to the Century Plaza Hotel and pick up the free sample and give it a try. But according to Ernest. You'd better not be late because this stuff is so hot, it's going to go like wildfire. wildfire. So we have some built-in scarcity as well, which is definitely important for every single uh, sales argument. You want, you don't just want to give uh, infinite opportunities for people to take you up on your offer. You have to have some urgency or scarcity because otherwise, you know, they're just not going to take action and they'll be on the fence. And in the end, in the end we have one more proof element uh, combined with with the, the benefit as well so it's no wonder because as Mari Allen says I don't care what's in it all I know is that it turns me on like crazy and it smells fantastic and this just just seals the deal uh, if you know uh, an ideal prospect uh, of ours is reading this ad she's gonna basically just just show up because why not you know uh, it doesn't make sense not to. It's an irresistible offer. They get free samples. They get to meet celebrities. Uh, they get to find out really what's up with this whole uh, potential controversy, this emotional story. And it's just super powerful. So yeah, that's it. Basically, uh, as you can see, it's just one page ad, but we're talking for 30 minutes here uh, about, about dissecting it. And there's so many other like, granular things that that could easily uh make this video two three four hours long you know uh it's just a copywriting masterpiece and gary halbert was such a genius even though he uh he wrote this decades ago this ad just it just did super well and uh, hopefully uh, you also learned something valuable for it and uh, if you enjoy this video then make sure to leave a like uh, a comment as well. What was your number one uh, takeaway from this uh, breakdown, from this ad breakdown? I'd really love to know. And if you want to learn more about copywriting and want to see more um, breakdowns, ad breakdowns like this, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and also hit the, the little notification bell icon because that way you'll be the first to know uh, when I upload um, upload a new video like this. And spoiler alert, I'm constantly hand copying ads nowadays and I actually wanna start uh, posting videos about, um, about uh, the analysis uh, of, of, of those ads, okay? So uh, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one.